guys, we got a little story to tell here. Wow. Hi, I'm Bill Lishman, and my feather friends here are my flying partners. And this is the story you're about to see is the culmination of a boyhood dream of mine to fly with the birds. And the story really has a parallel because it began with a German scientist by the name of Conrad Lorenz, who really wrote the book on how birds learn things. And it was through the help of studying his teachings that got me together with them. We went through quite a few adventures in this, and I'd like to share it all with you now. My friend Bill Carrick is a naturalist and a filmmaker. And when I met him in his wildlife preserve in 1986, he had just completed working on the IMAX film Skyward, in which he had trained 30 geese to fly with a boat. I told him of my lifelong dream to fly with the birds. He liked the idea and agreed to help out, firstly by supplying me with some goslings, and secondly by coaching me on the training of the young birds. He tells me of the experiments of the German scientist Lorenz and how he'd discovered that young birds become attached to the first thing they see after they're hatched. He called this phenomena imprinting. These little fur balls hatch out after 28 days of incubation and Bill and I become their surrogate parents. And like all first parenting, it's a bit of fun to start with because they really don't want to get in this box. Of course they don't understand that we're just taking them to their new home, which is a pen I've built right next to the landing strip. Carmen's fascinated by them, and every morning we get up and take them for a run. As we run with them, I carry a tape recorder and play them the sound of the ultralight. Whenever they stop, they eat grass. It's either run or eat grass, and they really enjoy running. It looks like they're almost running in formation. Perhaps it's instinctive practice for takeoff. Every day their wings seem to get stronger. Look at the look at this guy just underneath the tape recorder. Every day there's a new adventure. One morning we take them back to the pond that's about a half a mile walk from our house. And nothing deters them. And there's no doubt about them being water birds, they just climb right in. And it's certainly fascinating to watch them in the water. They really love each other, don't they, Dad? They sure do. Inside of your boot? The water will, I see. It gives me an idea, so I borrow a tank from Bill Carrick that's been used in another IMAX film. And I put them in and watch them from underneath. Most fascinating is watching them dive. In my quest for bird flight, I started out this way, as these old films show, with a Regalo hang glider that afforded little more than a sleigh ride. Soon I graduated to this bi-wing glider, and it wasn't without mishap. Some people say I learned to fly the right way, as an Orville and Wilbur, and others say I took a crash course in flying.
One thing was for sure. I got sick of carrying the thing back up the hill. So following the lead of ultralight pioneer John Moody, I put on this small engine. Look at the instrumentation. And this is my first powered flight. Unfortunately, my throttle slides back to uh, idle after I take off, and I get my first lesson in the stall. It looked terrible, but after 10 minutes, I'm ready to go again, and this is my first real powered flight. And I'll tell you, there was nothing so scary. I'm just hanging from my armpits. I still had a lot to learn about landing. Eventually I did get it down, however. If I count my legs as my first landing gear, I've been through five different designs. And I realized early on when I'd be working with the geese, I'd be taxiing with them on a rough landing strip week after week. Therefore I needed something that would stand up and yet be flyable when I came to fly. And I needed something light, strong, good suspension, and most of all, steerable nose gear. So what I've come up with, uh, I was able to take all my previous uh, designs and integrate them together using the CAD program on the computer. And I wound up with this 18 pound landing gear, has eight inches of travel in the suspension front and back, steerable nose gear. And then the beauty again of the CAD program was that I was able to uh, plot it out full scale gave me full-size drawings to work from in the shop. I'm a metal sculptor by profession and I have a well-equipped shop. This is a wire sketch for a life-size bison I did for a 3D film and also a life-size welded steel eagle. We create the landing gear out of chrome molly tubing We've, we became experienced making tubular furniture a while back using a silver brazing technique which is quite strong. This will be the rear suspension and I'll put bungee cords where, where near my right hand is. And that's the frame with the engine mount at the rear. Now the rear suspension is going on, the rear landing gear legs. This is the first rollout. I test it by rolling it down the driveway. It works fine. This is a momentous day. We bring the birds and the aircraft together. I use an old Easy Riser airframe with a, with a covering stripped off. I don't want it flying while I'm taxiing fast up and down the runway. And the birds adopt it immediately and nestle under the wing. Now I'm ready to test the whole thing. The wings on the landing gear and the engine, everything's ready to go. I have some idea the geese will follow me right off. Uh, they don't follow. And the bungee cord breaks and the landing gear collapses. So it's back to the shop, but it's a minor repair. We take another tack and we just push it around. We don't run the, the engine at all. I push my son, Jordy. I'm not sure whether they're following us or running away from us. But it is tiring. We do it for a number of days. We do that for about a week and then I get gravity to help me a little bit. A little bit of encouragement from behind, but the geese still don't follow too well. 
And I'm getting frustrated, and I think, gee, it's never going to happen. But we keep at it day after day, up and down the runway. The geese are at least holding their wings out. I think they might, they might be able to fly, but I don't know whether they'll ever stay with me. Maybe they think that I'm foolish, that their wings aren't developed enough and we can't fly. Why run up and down the runway? Within one week, they seem to lose their gosling fluff and their adult feathers come in. They look like geese now, not little fluff balls. And we keep taxiing up and down the runway with them, but their main preoccupation is in the pool. They know they have wings for some reason, but they're not quite sure yet. But a week later, we try again. And now their, their wings are fully feathered, and they can take short hops. It's looking more promising. And another day, another attempt. They're getting off the ground. Some of them are maybe flying 20 feet. Murray Cooper herds them back for another attempt. Still their main fascination is with the pool. Every day they preen themselves. They spend hours doing it, getting their airframes in shape. And I get in the pool with them and splash around. But they seem to be aware that they're soon going to be flying. Then one day I take them down to the end of the runway and I really think they're going to fly this day and I give it full throttle and as soon as I hit the throttle they take off. And they fly about a foot off the ground but they fly. Two mornings later I do the same thing and they really are flying now. They seem to be veeing off behind me even. It's amazing. I'm almost sure that they'll follow me in the air now. After they land, I turn around, come back and praise them. However, their main interest is to get in the pool and have a quick splash. Now it's really important to get the Easy Riser airworthy, so I take the wings off and put it in the shop. My old Easy Riser flying buddy, Jack Weber, comes over, and we, we totally recover it in clear mylar so it looks the same, and I add the elevator. I haven't flown it in almost three years, and I've forgotten how it flies, but it does fly beautifully. There were a few glitches at first, but we get them ironed out, and I take it for a maiden flight. I land and have a little meeting with the birds. I tell them tomorrow we'll 